eBay sellers, and yes, it's time for another eBay supersized sales of $100 or more video recap. The sales in this video come from my Facebook group where every month we have a dedicated thread where sellers can show off their sales of $100 or more. Before we get started though, it's time for a calendar check-in. Okay students, you can pull out your calendar and see this week on January 19th is a task for you to fill in some information about your business. The question is, what is your favorite category to sell in? And the reason I ask this question is to get you thinking about your business. Are you really doing what you want to be doing? Are you selling products that you really hate cleaning or photographing or shipping? Because you know what? This is your business and you can do it any way you want to. So really think about what are your favorite things to sell? What is your favorite category to sell in? And then months later or even years later, you can look back at this calendar and see what you wrote and see how your business has evolved over time. I designed this calendar to be like a planner so you can keep track of these things and change what you don't like. Because when you love what you're doing, it's not like work. So whether you're doing this as a business or a hobby, you want to make it fun and you want to look forward to getting up every morning and working on your eBay. I also have one correction. I missed a typo on January 27th. It says Velcro is a copyrighted word and it should say not allowed on eBay. So that was my error. I apologize for that and just want to clarify that you cannot use the word Velcro. You want to use the words hook and loop. And now on to the amazing $100 or more eBay sales. We're going to start with Mark Sherrill. Paid $20 on clearance at Target. Sold for $100 plus $17 shipping. The item is Missoni for Target, set of three zigzag ceramic mixing nesting serving bowls. Target did a collaboration with Missoni probably 2011. And I'm wondering, Mark, if this was left over from that or have they revived that collaboration? Would love to know. Next up is Linda Fay. Bought this at Goodwill for about $13. I had it listed for $115 and accepted an offer of $100 plus shipping. It took around six months to sell. This is a beautiful Fenton glass vase. Sherry Isaacs found this quilt in a thrift store on vacation in Tucson about three months ago. Had it listed for around 150 with very little action. I recently started canceling seven older listings a day and selling similar. I switch photos up, change price, add a few words in the title. Within two days of doing that to this one, I got an offer of $100. New price was $125. So I was happy to take it paid $6. I'll take that profit any day. This is a vintage quilt with beautiful scalloped edges and it looks like a big one 79 by 64 inches. Next up is Sue Gerwig purchased a lot of dolls and paper dolls from an online auction for $12. I took best offer of $100 for this Lee Middleton 24 inch junior varsity doll. Dolls are not fast sellers, but I didn't mind waiting for the right buyer. This sale is all profit. I sold one set of the paper dolls that paid for my total investment. So you can see there Lee Middleton 24 inch junior varsity doll 
$100. Leslie Kidd. This one just squeaks by at $102.50. This yearbook was in a lot of about 50 books that I won at auction for $1. I knew it was special, but I didn't know what to list it for, so I started at $30. I really enjoyed looking through it. This is a vintage Morehouse College yearbook from 1959. Faith asked, how did you know this was special? And Leslie said, just because it was Morehouse College and from the 50s. It would have been worth who knows how much if someone was a famous student. And yes, yearbooks sell. Case in point, I've moved several times in my life and dragged my yearbooks along with me. And at one location, we had a flood in the basement. That's where these were stored and they were completely ruined. Luckily, I have enough friends who have yearbooks from our high school and post things on Facebook all the time. So I don't feel like I need to go out and buy one. But these kinds of things happen. Things are destroyed in fires. Things are uh, lost to other people in divorces, <laughs> like if they went to high school together. Um, all kind of things happen. So, yeah, this is a great sale. A dollar sold for one hundred two fifty. Sherry Ogden just sold at auction for a hundred and five dollars plus shipping. I bought this last year at the thrift store for a few dollars. When I researched it, I realized it was actually a very rare piece. Not in the greatest condition, but I took lots of pictures and fully described the flaws. Very rare vintage Relpo Japan ceramic planter boy on sled. $105 and Sherry is in Canada. Jackie Basie. These were $1.21 each at Value Village. I asked whether I could get a lower price since I was purchasing so many. The manager said $80 a tube. I planned to sell in lots of five, but one person wanted them all after listing. Oh, hours after listing. My per lot price was higher, but I was happy for the profit and quick sale. And this is a lot of five L'Oreal conditioners. These come inside the hair color box. What happens with these is some people don't use this conditioner because it is pretty heavy or they just use a tiny bit so that tube lasts forever. And as they keep coloring their hair and keep buying more boxes of hair color, these are inside. Eventually you get kind of a stockpile and you can sell those. Other people love this conditioner and it's not sold on its own. So it's matching up the have with the have nots. Anyway, this lot of conditioner sold for $110. Tamarin McClure, free to me, sold in one month for full asking price. Panasonic TV VCR with FM radio, $115 and it was free and yes people still use these and it's my understanding that they are big in the gaming community. Now for our cover photo, Mallory Lindsley, dad's beer can found in garage, <laughs> so free, sold for $115. National Bohemian Cone Top Beer Can. What a treasure that is. Sue Ann Acres. I love this sale. I bought this at Goodwill for $25. As I was checking out, the cashier commented that this was the ugliest thing she had ever seen, and the customer behind me agreed with her and added that he looked kind of scary, too. <laughs> The three of us had a brief conversation about the adage, so ugly it's cute, sold in four months, beautiful, $25 sold for $120, and yes, I agree that this doll, elf, troll, whatever he is, 
pretty creepy looking and I don't think I would want that in my house but hey to each his own and he sold for hundred twenty dollars Jennifer Elliott I found this at Goodwill for a dollar ninety nine while my family and I were on a little getaway it wasn't the nicest Goodwill and my husband was shocked I could find anything for resale I listed it and it sold within five minutes for hundred and twenty dollars plus shipping this is my fastest sale which makes me wonder how much I underpriced it okay Jennifer I'm gonna just put this out there people set up alerts for certain products and the minute they're listed that alert goes out and those buyers jump over to that listing and buy that item so don't beat yourself up for underpricing it if you did your research and you priced it with the information you had in that moment that's totally fine this is gonna happen but just remember buyers have those alerts so just because it sells very quickly doesn't mean you did anything wrong it just means that buyer has been looking for this and you had it so this goes to everybody don't beat yourself up about underpricing things who knows what you could have gotten for it today tomorrow next week next year just use the information you have in that moment price it the best you can and be happy that you sold it okay moving right along we have Mia paid three dollars and twenty two cents for these at a flea market I sold these once already for hundred and ninety two dollars on auction but the buyer never paid listed again as a buy it now and accepted an offer after about three weeks also going to a buyer in Canada this is a lot of 16 Bratz dolls with clothing shoes and accessories three dollars and twenty two cents sold for one twenty four fifty and now we've got Rachel Hilst paid twenty five dollars for a nineteen ninety one play school Victorian dollhouse on Facebook marketplace I sold the accessories for hundred and twenty five dollars plus shipping it was a seven day auction so there you can see she has everything laid out very nicely twenty five dollars sold for a hundred and twenty five Sherry Ogden bought this gorgeous vintage tapestry for ten dollars at an online auction and sold in about a month for hundred and twenty five dollars plus shipping I actually bought three at the auction the other two were two dollars and fifty cents each I sold one of those for ninety dollars so I just have one left this is a rare vintage Burmese Caliga tapestry measuring 36 by 29 inches ten dollars sold for hundred and twenty five next up is Lara Rossignol new to this group but have been following on YouTube for a while well thank you very much I appreciate that I sell mostly on Etsy but cross-listed some things before the holidays I bought this tablecloth at an estate sale for two dollars designed in the 60s by Marion V Dorn so rare there were actually no comps but based on her wiki page I felt this was valuable I listed it for hundred and ninety five dollars plus shipping and took a best offer of hundred and thirty dollars a happy collector got it I'd had it in my Etsy shop for about four months and it sold in about six weeks on eBay so there you can see mid-century modern tablecloth two dollars sold for a hundred and thirty okay now we have Sabina Charles she said I'm still a newbie to selling it was from hubby's personal collection so zero dollars to me but what a project it was listed and received many lowball offers then moved to auction and it sold then that buyer didn't pay relisted again at buy it now and it finally sold took a best offer and I was never so glad to see an item sold thank you Suzanne for your teachings 
and you are very welcome. This is a sealed 2003 Testers Big Rigs Freightliner Metal Die Cast Model Kit. Zero dollars, finally sold for 135. Laura Geis King, first time in the $100 group. Well, congratulations, you made it. I was at Goodwill, spotted this Kugi sweater from about three aisles over and ran like a crazy person to grab it. Paid $8, sold on a seven day auction for $135.50 plus buyer paid shipping. And this is a three extra large size vintage 80s, 90s, Coogie Australia sweater. $8, sold for $135.50. Tasha Lee, paid $10 at Goodwill, sold overnight for full asking price. This is a vintage Bond incredible sweater knitting machine, new in box, as seen on TV. Looks like it could even be Ronco. <laughs> If you guys remember the Ronco record cleaner and the Ronco smokeless ashtray and all those crazy products they came up with. $10 sold for $140. Tina DeVore. This was a great way to start off my year. This was my husband's trash can when he was a kid. Brought it home from his mom's attic so no cost. Listed it. Saturday morning and it sold by that evening for full asking price. Vintage Wins Spitfire Gas Power Booster Trash Can sold for $149.95 and it was just an old thing sitting up in the attic that had been ignored for years and voila there it sold on eBay. Okay we've got Patty Lavieri. I hope I said that right. Purchased for $5 at a tag sale over the summer. This is a Salad Master food processor with five cones, sold for $149.99. And this is, it's like a stand and you change out the different cones and they have different blades on them so you can shred or julienne your potatoes or grate cheese or whatever. I've sold this before, these are good sellers. $5 sold for $149.99. Okay, Amanda Joy. Oh, I bought this Care Bear with 14 others for $25. Couldn't find many comps. Listed it around $200. Made a ton of offers. Refused similar offers. Then it sat stagnant for two weeks. Probably could have sold it higher, but buyer paid immediately and I would rather see stuff go to a home where it will be loved rather than collect dust at my house. Paid $53 for it, took maybe two months to sell. This is Vintage Kenner 1980s Charity Care Bear I Love You First Edition and it sold for $150. Courtney Van Doren I love these vintage pull down lamps. I've sold three now and all are $100 plus. I paid $12.50 for this in an estate sale that came with two of these in a box. Sold another last month that I paid $5 for at a garage sale. This is a vintage mid century pull down saucer UFO light and it sold for $150. Sandy Nix. While Cutco knives may be one of those things that most resellers know about, this is not necessarily true of the general population. I bought these for $5 at a family run estate sale. The item is five Cutco orange brown swirl knives with handle mount tray sold for $159.99 and her cost was $5. Rachel Hilst has another item. She paid $22 for this Le Creuset Dutch oven at Goodwill. It took about seven weeks to sell for $170 
plus $30 shipping. And it is a bright cherry red color. I never see these at my Goodwill, but I always look. Oriana Araceli, found in a yard sale, paid 50 cents or a dollar in summer, sold in less than a week, went to Japan, sold cheaper than my price, but I added a video on my description so buyer knows it is in working condition. This is a 2005 Furby, tan with pink belly and blue eyes, and it is working. So her maximum cost was a dollar and it sold for $170. Next up is Jody Clark, paid $8.49 at Goodwill for this vintage Sunbeam 20-3 AG Radiant Control toaster. It had scuff scratches, was dented on one side, and had a loose metal piece inside. Sold in a couple of hours for $175 plus shipping. Cost was $8.49. Beth Tompkins found this at Goodwill for $1.01. Priced it at $2.29 in November. Took a best offer of $180 plus shipping. This is Eden brand. E-D-E-N, Velour White Lamb Sheep Plush Baby Toy. A dollar sold for 180. Kathleen Gifford, so excited to be able to list in this thread this month. Found this 1950s copyright set of hardback Little House on the Prairie books at a Goodwill. They were $1.99 each found seven of the set. I returned about five more times looking for the one missing book but no luck. I ended up buying a copy on eBay for six dollars to complete my set. The eBay book was a perfect match to my set and in great condition. I asked two hundred dollars for the set and within a day had an offer of a hundred and fifty five. I countered at 185 plus shipping and they accepted. I spent about twenty dollars for all the books thrilled with my profit so there you can see her book set of little house on the prairie books i loved reading those when i was a little girl and just a trivial fact you may not know that laura ingalls wilder did not start writing until she was 65. so if you've always wanted to be a writer and you haven't tried that yet <laughs> You may not have anything to write about until you're older anyway, so that's kind of a common story for a lot of the more famous writers is they were older because you got to have stuff happen in your life to write about. Okay, Karen O'Connor. I bought this St. John suit at a hospice thrift store. I had asked for the price and the lady told me $3. I asked, are you sure? because I would have paid more and felt sort of bad. She said, that's correct, but wait, you still need to pick out your free item. I listed it on eBay one evening and it sold the next morning for $190. St. John Evening Red Skirt Suit Santana Knit. Her price was $3, sold for $190. Joyce Bodenhammer found at the bins and paid less than ten dollars took an offer of two hundred took about three weeks to sell and there it is again folks the Danbury mint Christmas tree this one has horses on it <laughs> ten dollars sold for two hundred Cindy Krauss paid two dollars for this at a local thrift store sold within a week for a hundred and ninety nine dollars I've been selling on eBay since 2001 and this is my first $200 sale. Wow, it took over 20 years for that to happen. You are so persistent, Cindy. Cindy went on to say, I've had a few over $100 sales, but this was my first $200 sale. Look for those vintage cruel kits, everyone. This one was from 1980 and just sitting in a bin at a thrift store. 
Obviously, they didn't know what they had. This is a Sunset Stitchery Kit. $2 sold for $199.97. Denise Foley from my house. We have a lot of Uno games and I was in our game closet looking for new stuff to donate to Toys for Tots but checked before donating. Peeled off the $2.50 price tag before listing. Sold for $202.49. This is a rare LeBron James Uno cards with Hail the King card from 2007. So she originally paid $2.50 for it somewhere along the way and it sold for $202.49. Jennifer Elliott, eBay has been good to me this week. Paid $8.99, sold for $235, plus shipping in about an hour to a buyer in China. Found at Goodwill. This is a clean, vintage, red, Coleman, single mantle lantern. $235. Okay, Savannah Boone. I bought this from an online estate sale for $57. It sold for $245 on best offer in a week. Vintage 1970s Paragon God Bless Our Pad. Cruel framed. Yes, this is in the Bolo book on page 27. These are out there. People are finding them. People like Savannah Boone who sold this for $245. The Bolo book has about 130 items in it like this. So it's a great study tool to help you learn what to look for. Okay, Tracy Howard. First post here. Paid $1.99 each box of Angora rabbit hair skeins made in France. Posted for $395 on eBay and sold on offer I sent out within a month of listing for $248 plus shipping. Rare find, but several area resellers in the store the day I found it. Keep your eyes open for unique things like this. So there you can see 23 skeins of pure Angora rabbit hair yarn. She paid $1.99 for each box, three boxes there, so about $6. Sold for $248. Tamarin McClure. Bought at Goodwill for $8. Sold in two months for best offer of $250 plus shipping. The item is Steyr Bears by Kathleen Wallace, 24 inch jointed teddy bear. Next up is Mindy Allen. She says more of the Dansk flatware and the best listing that remained. Bought at a thrift store for about $5, listed for about three weeks. Had eight watchers, sent offers, no takers. Having seen the post by Suzanne about raising your price after I had lowered it several times, I did just that. Raised the price to higher than my original listing price all the way up to $315. The next day I had two additional watchers. Yesterday I had an offer. I countered. Buyer accepted. Thank you, thank you. It works. One of the most lucrative sales I've had since I started selling in the late 90s. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> this is Dansk Parallel Diamond Stainless Flatware, lot of 20 pieces, four place settings. And what she's talking about there is when you see you have a bunch of watchers, raise the price. Don't lower it because if you lower it, they're just going to wait for you to lower it more. So raising the price may also generate an email to the watchers that the price has changed, that it's gone up, and that may encourage them to make an offer or outright buy it because you might keep raising the price. 
the market changes. You're not committed to that price that you put on it when you list it. And I do encourage you to jiggle those prices around because it generates those emails to your watchers that the price has changed. So I'm glad that worked out for you, Mindy. Leslie Kidd picked up at an estate sale for $2 back over the summer. I found it tucked away in a basement crawl space. There was no price on it, so they charged me $2. This is a Walter Brockman original Whistle Bend train station. Sold for $270. Cost was $2. And Leslie, I commend you for crawling into a nasty, dirty, scary crawl space because there could have been anything under there. <laughs> So you are a very dedicated eBayer to um, search out products in those creepy spaces. Ginger Lampbright. I bought this about three weeks ago at a moving sale for $5. This is the same sale that I got the three pieces of Louis Vuitton for $200, a John Hart duffel bag for $10, and several pair of men's designer shoes for $2. Sold today a best offer for $275 plus shipping. The item is Coronado Americana Duffel Bag. And obviously it is leather and beautiful. Jennifer Elliott. Maybe I should rename this video The Jennifer Elliott Show because <laughs> she just keeps popping up. Paid $12.99, sold for $300 plus shipping, found at Goodwill and knew as soon as my hand touched it that it was good quality and worth looking up. Gorgeous, J.W. Hume Company Tan Brown Leather Briefcase, $300. And the last item in this video is Mallory Lindsley, who also had the cover photo because she had more than that one beer can. She said, another beer can from my father's collection, so free in my garage. Maybe could have asked more, but I have so many beer cans to research prices. Happy about this $300 buy it now sale as others tried to best offer on day one. So I think she's saying she got offers the day she listed it, but she held out for her price. Okay, now coming next week is the first mega sales video and at first I thought I would showcase sales $500 and up but there just weren't enough of those to make a long enough video that would be worth making so the threshold is now 350 or more so if you have had a $350 sale in the last couple of months November December early January and it has not been on the supersize, just be patient, it's coming. I'm putting those aside for the mega sales video. Okay, we have made it to the end. Thank you again to everyone who participates in this thread on the Facebook group because it is so educational. I learn so much every time I go through the thread and pull out sales for this video. If your sale didn't make it, maybe next time that I know a lot of you don't have time to go through that thread and look at every single sale because now we're up to maybe 300 posts a month so these videos are kind of a recap just keep posting I'm trying to give everybody a turn so you can have your five minutes of fame on YouTube thanks for watching and I'll see you next time have a profitable productive and fun day on eBay bye